Hi, this is Paul Casey, the Kevin Brody Hall of Fame Educational Video Series. And we are discussing reflections of the senior grandmaster, Ed Parker, the founder of American Kempo, one of the most influential men in the modern history of the martial arts. Not only did he create American Kempo based upon his learning and teachings in Hawaii and through the teachers that he met there, but he refined it for the Western culture. He introduced it to America. And because of that, he created not only a system of modern fighting, but also a system for the thinking man, creating the world's greatest martial arts tournament, the International Cry Championships. When he saw talent, he recognized it and he made sure that that talent was recognized. Today, we are honored by one of the most humblest human beings I have met, a very talented man in his own right, in the martial arts for over 50 years, a senior master of the arts, a student of Ed Parker to the days when Mr. Parker was here to the present. Mr. White is considered to be one of the finest, and we welcome him to the Kempo Karate Hall of Fame to talk about his teacher, his friend, Edmund Kealoa Parker. Hello, Mr. White. Welcome. I'll do it. Thank you very much. It's certainly an honor to be able to talk about somebody I have so much respect for. Mr. White, we're going to ask a couple of questions to you right now and uh, reach inside and give us the best you can because that's the only way you do things. What was the most inspirational lesson you ever learned from Ed Parker? Well, I think that the ability to make people around him feel like they were the only people in the room. He had, was so charismatic. He just uh, had this unbelievable people skills that people just, I think, gravitated toward him because he had so many different aspects of his personality. But the one thing that he did do consistently is he had this ability to remember people's names, that to make them feel welcome, make them feel important. Um, just uh, some people skills that I didn't necessarily grow up with, but I saw a great example of how to treat people. And he certainly had that, you know, he just had this presence. I, I always talk about uh, if 50 people were in a room, you knew where Ed Parker, you might not even know Ed Parker, but you knew immediately that this person was somebody that that's kind of stood tall above everybody else. Can you share a personal story of your relationship with Mr. Parker, but not on the mat? Something that reflected his sense of humor? Yeah, you know, he did have a, a tremendous sense of humor. He loved to laugh. He loved to to uh, joke around and, you know, we spent uh, not a lot of time away from the studio, even though I did spend some very memorable times at his house or in Miami, we went there to promote the Karate Kid movie and he came out, and was actually sewing patches on our competitors' uniforms so we could go and represent uh, him at the tournament the next day. and. Um, I just you know a lot of people will make comments about Mr. Parker not being competitive. And I go, that's a side of him that I didn't see. I think he was very competitive. Uh, if, if you don't think he was competitive, you haven't driven with him. Because he certainly would uh, be out there and um, he hate to see people cut him off or try to get to a location before he did. You know, so he had that side. And I think uh, that's one thing I... I kind of recognized early you know he was uh somebody that was obviously very comfortable with himself but he always instilled in me the desire to be better and you know that's something that uh i had the pleasure of competing in front of him uh numerous times and it always made me want to uh excel you know you always have the will to win but there's also parts that you could reach in and pull out uh, when you need to, and when he was around, you needed to, because I wanted him to be proud of me representing uh, the IKKA and, and wearing his patch, and uh, I just didn't want to lose wearing that patch, so I went, did my best effort to not. 
Do you remember the last time you saw him? A couple of months after the internationals, internationals eight months, so probably in about October. You know, we would go up and um, get patches for for the year, try to do it once or twice a year and get enough patches to uh, keep all of our people uh, wearing them while we were competing. So I would say it was probably October, a couple months before he passed. Do you remember any conversations with him? Well, many conversations, not necessarily that particular one. I, I do remember um, leaving and then he was telling some, some joke uh, on the way out the door. Cause you know, I used to love and to go up there after somebody, I just posted this recently, we would have a belt test and if his schedule didn't allow him to attend, I used to love to take new black belts up there and set him on the bench or his couch. And then I would try to get on the other side so I had a good view. And you know how animated he was. He was always grabbing people and doing hyper extensions with lone kimono, putting his fingers in their eyes. And they're sitting there in awe because it's Ed Parker and could, could hardly move. Uh, and so, you know, those trips were something that I'll always remember. And, and my black belts now, when we talk about it, it's something that were special moments that uh, we both cherish. Well, I would just thank him. I would thank him for the quality of my life. What I've been able to do for a living for 50 years is all a direct result of his influence and education that he gave to me. And I could never repay or thank him enough for giving me this opportunity that uh, I so embrace, you know, Thanksgiving's coming up soon. And this idea uh, of giving thanks is something that I do often to him in our prayer. Uh, and I have no idea what course my life would have taken without the time that I was able to spend with him and the education he provided for us. He taught me how to teach. He taught me how to communicate with people, how to treat people, how to, not just the physical part, karate is, is a wonderful thing, but the people skills that he gave to us, that, not just to me, but to so many of us, the influence on how to convey a message properly, the advantages of education, the vocabulary, uh, how to be articulate. You know, Ed Parker could talk to presidents of countries and he could talk pigeon with his friends from Hawaii. He just had that ability to make everybody feel important. And those are all things that I've tried to learn from him. There'll never be another Ed Parker in my opinion, but we could always try to improve and try to be uh, the best person we could be. And he taught us that. And I think he emphasized that, you know, he taught thinkers and he taught individuals. He didn't want anybody cloned. He didn't want everybody to be like him exactly, but we all take have part of him. We all have part of him every time we walk on the mat. It's a direct result of him. You're a God-fearing man. You know who your maker is. Mr. Parker was very devout in his religious beliefs. If Ed Parker were to walk into your office right now, because he had a few minutes, he was given that opportunity to spend with you. What would you say to Ed Parker? Mr. Parker, I'd like to tell you and express to you from the bottom of my heart, the gratitude that I have to you through your education that you gave to us. You've given me an opportunity to do and have a wonderful career for 50 years. There's not one thing I would do differently other than I'm glad I have this opportunity to express to you how much you mean to me and how fortunate I believe I am because of what you've done for me. I truly thank you. Thank you, Mr. White. That was beautiful.